Aries, it's me, Stormy, and here's your horoscope for April 2018. So listen up if you've been wanting to study astrology in the summertime. I now have a summer session available. All the details are in the description box down below. We kick off and we're going to work through the month of June. So if that's your session, I hope to see you there. Now, Aries, this month in April, first of all, happy birthday. This is birthday time. It's very exciting, but it's also kind of a busy time in terms of time management. You're going to have to look at time. And this month, you're also going to spend some time redefining how you're showing up in the world. We've also got um, both Saturn and Pluto going retrograde this month. So we're going to get a little bit of a break, which is phenomenal. But it is a time of looking back. It is still a pretty reflective month for you. And then as we get towards the end of the month, you start to see, I think, that you come out of your shell a little bit more and you're ready and able to to present yourself differently and you're prepared to do some cleaning out because you really have to re-see what you're spending your time on. What do you value? What's important to you right now, Aries? And how are you showing up to those things? For so many of you, Aries, you've had Uranus in your sign for seven years, just about. You've been getting a new identity. Life may look way different to you than it ever you ever thought it would. And so now you're getting to see how you're gonna show up on this new stage of life. So let's jump in here and look at this month. So coming into this month here on the second, we have got Mars and Saturn in a conjunction here. Now they're both in Capricorn, but the good news here I think is that because this is a conjunction and <laughs> because Saturn is at home here in Capricorn, these both these energies are both actually on pretty good behavior, right? So the conjunct energy as they're sharing space, you're actually able to get some things done. This this is happening in your 10th house. Beautiful. This is career, soul level calling. If you're retired, what are you doing to add value to the world, your world? What do you feel like your purpose is? If you stay at home, it doesn't matter what you do. The question is, how are you showing up? What do you have to give? How are you adding value to the world? Now, for some people as well, this is definitely going to be very much so at that level of public reputation. But for everybody, it's at public reputation. It may just depend on the level of how public you are, right? But everything here is about what are you doing and are you moving towards what you feel called to do and what you feel called to bring to the world. Now, between the fourth and the fifth here, we see some energies and I give you both of these dates because I feel like it'll last a little bit. Mercury is still retrograde, and this is our communication planet. So uh, we're rethinking, re-editing, um, communication things are delayed or are flipped backwards. We're thinking about the past. We're reflective. It's in your sign. So you're thinking about you. You're thinking about who you are now. You're thinking about who you used to be. You're thinking about what you value. But between the fourth and the fifth, Mercury is going to square the conjunction of Mars and Saturn here in Capricorn. So what this can actually create is this, it's like grow up energy, right? Grow up communication. So whether you're thinking more seriously about, right, what do I value? How am I willing to present myself to the world? Or you actually end up having some kind of conversation or somebody has a conversation with you and they give you the, hey, that's not going to work. You have to grow up conversation. This is certainly going to be something that challenges you and moves you into action. That's what a square does. A square says, I need action now. So it sparks us into some kind of movement. Now, the other thing I think is great about that Mars um, Saturn energy is that there's a strong level of determination that comes with this energy. You're wanting to move towards your goal. You're wanting to pursue. You're wanting to achieve. So it's very, very good as a matter of fact. And it's also very good for your sex life if you've got that going on. <laughs> now, when we get to the 14th of the month, we've got Jupiter who is now retrograde. He is actually in Scorpio in a sextile with Pluto who's over in Capricorn. So again, this energy is intersecting here in a sextile is a positive aspect that says you will likely intelligently take advantage of the opportunity. You will do something smart with this energy. Now happening in the 10th house, this brings success to you, right? This brings positive change. You don't have to push it. You don't have to force it. Um, 
it can be a really delicious energy to take action with along with that Mars and Saturn energy. So if you are trying to push in the career, if you are trying to hustle in the career, if you're trying to whatever you're trying to do in that purpose place, this is a great energy for you to use. Because the other thing, as I told you, time management, you may be looking at maybe you have new people in your life right are those people more important or is what aries want to do more important which which things get your attention and this energy helps you see that because it's like man i want to have this opportunity i want to take this time so on the 15th, we've got not only Mercury coming direct, which remember, just because Mercury's coming direct this day doesn't mean he's ready to play ball. Don't come running at Mercury with your decisions and your contracts and your new workout plan. He's not ready yet. He has to have his cosmic coffee and stretch and get ready. It's springtime. He's like, hello, springtime. You happened while I was asleep. You know, give him a second to resume his orbit, and then Mercury will get back on board with helping communications go forward now keep in mind that mercury does stay in shadow energy so still some of that retrograde pasty vibe until may 3rd okay but he comes direct here in your sign and on the exact same day we've got the new moon happening in aries the new moon we're going to plant these seeds of intention you've been spending all this time thinking about you reevaluating you how do you look how do you dress how do other people perceive you how do you want to be seen how do you regard yourself and now you've got these seeds of intention of how you can start to show up and communicate and give that beauty and that new set of magic to the world on the 17th, Saturn is going to go retrograde until September 6th. This is happening in your 10th house. This is why I say two. This business of priorities, time management, what do you value? How are you showing up in the world? What do you have to offer? You will have the next five months of some of the most rewarding time to consider these things right the insight that saturn will help you gather while you're actually getting a little bit of a break right is going to be like nothing you've ever seen because he's going to bring wisdom right he's going to say these are the things these are the things that we need to help us achieve these are the things that matter right these are the things that are going to we're going to build a solid life with so the next five months for you and for some of you, if you've been studying, you've been trying to achieve something at work very specifically, you could be taking your tests. You could be doing whatever you need to do to get to the next level is something you could be working on right now. On the 19th, we see the sun moving into Taurus along with Venus. So now we've got light, heat, life, vitality meets diplomacy, sensuality, harmony, all in your second house. So your second house, your money is starting to get a little bit of life. You could start to feel a little bit indulgent. If you have any Taurus people in your life, I'm sure they're already planning their birthday cakes. So you could be eating, right? <laughs> Whatever is happening, the second house zone. You could also find yourself maybe making a purchase or something like that because Taurus does value you things and these two energies will light up that space where maybe you want to spend or do something like that it's also a phenomenal energy for being social so get out there and be social for sure it's springtime it's birthday time get out there on the 22nd we have pluto going retrograde again also until september in your 10th house now pluto is subtle when he's retrograde but significant this is going to be the place, Aries, where maybe you are ready to clean out some old hurts and some old ideas, right? Remember, wherever Pluto is happening for you, he's saying this has to die off so that this can live. But in this time, in the next five months, you may be still looking at what you're willing to let die off so that the new Aries can live. This is a beautiful, subtle, house cleaning, reevaluation, clarity getting kind of five months months it's just so delicious on the 24th Venus is actually going to move out of Taurus move into Gemini move into your third house social time go out have a latte get a twisty cone I don't know if you guys have those but get a twisty cone work out get social get social get out but conversation becomes diplomatic harmonious sensual sexual um 
just really wonderfully luxurious in your space. So if you're writing, my students out there, or any, or my writers, if you're writing, you're preparing any kind of writing, it could be received very well. You're speaking well, you're hearing people well. There could just be a lot of beautiful, harmonious conversation happening for you. And whatever it is that you're trying to put out, could actually have just this little bit of honey on the end of it, you know, so very good. So if you can get out and be social, it's just such a wonderful time, which usually Aries, no one has to ask you to leave your house. You're pretty movable. On the 29th, we have the full moon happening at six degrees of Scorpio. So make sure you locate that on your chart. It's also in a really positive, um, Sun Saturn trine. So this is great for getting things done. Now the full moon says that we are going to and acknowledge or adjust something. That's what we're gonna do with that space. So this is happening in your eighth house, but we've also got now Saturn retrograde, Pluto retrograde, Jupiter retrograde, Mercury still in shadow time, even though he's pointing forward. But this Sun Saturn trine as well is great for getting work done cleaning up, cleaning out, letting things go. And this is a deep cleaning that we'll be doing. So this is not that let's find out how to love yourself more. That's always the answer. But this is letting go of some old stuff that you can't travel with anymore. If you want to travel at the speed of love, travel at the speed of passion, you've got to put down some luggage. You just do. So it may be a wonderfully healing time for so many of you out there, especially in the sense of my purpose. Who am I? What am I doing? Maybe the universe over this last year has dropped your purpose in your lap and now you just get to adjust to your role and show up for it. How gorgeous is that? All right, Aries, I love you so, so, so much. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I hope to see you in class. Hope to see you in $3 Thursdays as well, where we will be discussing Uranus in Taurus. So I love you guys. Have a beautiful April. Bye.